Lincoln Center. Another one of those quirky little Kern County towns with a rather peculiar name. So how did it get that name? And more to the point, where are all the pumpkins? All good questions. Here in another installment of his series on the people and places where we live is 17's Robert Price with the answers. You've driven past it dozens of times if you've driven past once. And maybe after all these years, you no longer chuckle to yourself. But admit it, the first time you saw the words pumpkin center on a state highway sign, you wondered, what's that all about? Well, it so happens the story of pumpkin center a bump in the road on State Route 119 west of Highway 99 is a charming little chapter in Europe's World War I era migration to America. In this case, two young Italian immigrants who worked neighboring farms married a pair of Czechoslovakian sisters. In 1914, Michele Gimanani, who went by Mike, immigrated to Kern County. And three years later, having built up a nest egg, he broke ground on what would eventually grow into a 120-acre family farm along Taft Highway. There, just east of Weibel Road, a few miles south of Bakersfield, he grew a variety of crops, including cotton, grapes, alfalfa, melons, and as feed for his hogs, pumpkins, which grew wild in the fertile fields. His one and only neighbor of consequence was Umberto Compagnani, who came to California at age 16 and eventually married a Czechoslovakian girl. In 1926, at Compagnani's urging, Gemanani sent away for and married her sister. The Gemanani's and Compagnani's roughed out a dirt road that ran between their two properties, and Taft Highway, or at least the easternmost section of it, was born. In those early days, the residents of what was then called Gemanati Corners, if it was called anything at all, would see only two or three cars per hour at most. But eventually, traffic increased enough to justify a roadside fruit stand. It opened in 1926, the same year as Gemanati's marriage. In time, the Gemanati family fruit stand became a small market. Back in the day, this Taft Highway had no traffic. And then as times went on, Taft Highway was lined up, you know, all the way back to Pumpkin Center because people started, you know, traveling on Taft Highway. In 1932, a Cherokee named Lone Bush, sensing promise in what by this time was called Route 399, opened a barbershop next door to the market. In 1936, a traveling sign painter from Philadelphia by the name of J.J. DeMarco came through the tiny settlement and spotting the barbershop offered a barter. He would paint a commercial sign for Lone Bush to post in front of the barbershop in exchange for a shave and haircut. Problem was Lone Bush still hadn't come up with a suitable name for his business. What to put on the sign? Lone Bush was giving it some thought when DeMarco remarked about all the wild pumpkins piled along the dirt road, more than the hogs could handle or the fruit stand could sell. It seemed at that moment to him, the settlement had become the gourd capital of the universe. Said the traveling sign painter, boy, this is the pumpkin center. Eureka, Lone Bush settled on the name Pumpkin Center Barbershop. The sign painter permanently parked his trailer under a tree and without a post office or a rail stop to offer alternative suggestions, the town became Pumpkin Center. The town's most famous citizen is probably Guy Madison. You what? Star of movie and TV westerns in the 1940s and 50s. But after the war, Pumpkin Center became known for an entirely different type of notoriety, country music. Buck Owens, Red Simpson, and Bill Woods had established Bakersfield as the West Coast's hotbed of honky-tonk. And by the mid-1950s, clubs were so numerous they spilled over into adjoining towns. One such club was the Pumpkin Center Barn Dance, a surplus World War II double Quonset hut, prefabricated corrugated metal that served as a community center. Anna Reading Carey was something of a regular. It was the place where all the teenagers went and the young people back in the 50s, 60s. So we had a lot of fun there. We had a lot of fun until my friend and I, Phyllis, got kicked out for dirty dancing and we never got to come back. <laughs> so that was the end of our Pumpkin Center day. They tapped us on the shoulder and said, I think you guys need to leave. 
the evocatively named stars of the Pumpkin Center Barn Dance? Cousin Ed Filling and the Ozark Squirrel Shooters. Her father, Lloyd Reading, played steel guitar for the Squirrel Shooters for two or three years. I think he said they got paid like $10 a night or something. Cousin Eb, a hillbilly banjo picker, real name James Elbert Pilling, wasn't just the star, he managed the place for 20 years. Pilling occasionally booked big stars like Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys, the Maddox Brothers and Rose, Hank Thompson, and two of the stars of the long-running hit western Bonanza, Lorne Green and Dan Blocker, who played father and son Ben and Haas Cartwright on TV, but had recording careers on the side. Decades later, some old-timers still hold the Pumpkin Center Barn Dance in special regard. Mark Anderson, a commercial real estate broker, is married to Mike Gemini's great-granddaughter, Tina, who runs the family trust that owns most of Pumpkin Center. This guy came out and he said that uh, him and his wife used to go there. He came with his wife's ashes. He wanted to be, come and visit it one more time with his wife's ashes because he remembered it from when they were young. Mike Gemini's enterprises prospered in Pumpkin Center, and in time, he turned it over to his children, including his son. Fred Gemini became a land developer and civic leader. So well known in the area, he became known as the mayor of Pumpkin Center. As Fred Gemini told it, pumpkins were never really that big a deal in Pumpkin Center. That didn't stop local television stations for years from setting up shop each Halloween in the pothole riddle parking lot of Elvira's general store. Gawking tourists would snap photos of themselves, cozied up to the town sign and needle Pumpkin Center residents about their community's unusual name. The Wall Street Journal even wrote about it once, interviewing Fred Gemini, who died in 2013. Highway 99 morphed into a freeway in the mid-1960s when it was rerouted from the Union Avenue corridor west to the doorstep of Pumpkin Center and other overlooked farm towns. By 2000, Bakersfield had grown south of Panama Lane, and suddenly the table grape vineyards and prune orchards in and around Pumpkin Center became more valuable to developers than to any farmer, and the asphalt moved in. Now a family can buy a 1,700 square foot home with landscaping and a two-car garage for $300,000. The state of affairs neither Michele Gimignani nor Umberto Camagnoni nor cousin Herb Pilling could ever have imagined. For now, Pumpkin Center, population about 1,700, is still pretty much the same Pumpkin Center it was three generations ago. The three quarters mile long strip of light industrial commerce is still waiting for its first stoplight. It's just a simple little country town and um, there are, I think a total of 32 pumpkin centers in the United States. Wow. And it's just, a, is this the most impressive one? <laughs> I don't know, you've never been to the other ones. Kern County's pumpkin center may be changing soon. Caltrans is about to embark on a $20 million project that will considerably change the look and feel of the unincorporated burg, adding a center turn lane, curbs and gutters, and complete streets features such as bike lanes to its narrow, pocked main thoroughfare. But still no crosswalk. That's uh, of concern because um, you know, the only crosswalk we have is at Weigel. We need to have a, a crosswalk in town because we have businesses on both sides you know, and it's dangerous going across the road. You have to look both ways and then take off running. I mean, I go across here all the time. <laughs> it is dangerous. Customers at the grocery store and at the post office have special challenges. At the post office, people have to back out into the highway to, to, to get out. It's nice if you have a newer car that has a backup camera. But I must say a lot of people out here don't have that. There's been several people run over out here. And I think that that's what's pushed the project, the, the safety. That's not just a challenge for Caltrans or for the county, which for the most part has jurisdiction here. It's a concern for the city of Bakersfield, which is in the process of annexing pockets of land just west of Pumpkin Center and is likely to one day inherit the little village's traffic and other infrastructure challenges. Construction on the enhancements to Taft Highway through Pumpkin Center is expected to begin in fall 2025 and completion is expected in 2027. All these changes will likely do a lot for the residents of this historic little burg south of Bakersfield. So the next time you drive through Pumpkin Center, know that a lot of changes are on the way, just not a lot of changes to the pumpkin crop. Robert Price, 17 News.